Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Lessons and I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And today I have my good friend Gary with me from the channel No Nonsense. Hey everybody. I'm going to be leaving his information down below, so definitely make sure to check him out. And today, um, long awaited, I'm actually quite surprised I haven't done this sooner. I am shocked <laughs> when you said this was never reviewed. Yeah. Shocked. Surprisingly, like I recently reviewed one of their flankers, not Italian Zest, which I actually look forward to trying. Okay. Um, and this is the original, came back, uh, came out back in 2007, mm -hmm. and it's called Light Blue. So stay tuned. Like I said earlier, it came out in 2007. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever owned a bottle of this? I do. Yeah. I, I still own it, yep. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know what? And I haven't worn it in a very long time. Oh, and wow. after just spraying it again, I'm like, I want to wear this again. Yeah, I've been wearing it for a while now. Um, surprisingly, I didn't own the bottle when I was much younger. Okay. Like right around the time either. when it came out. I always wore another fragrance, which is set to smell somewhat similar to it. Okay. And that's Realities by Liz Claiborne. Okay. I actually acquired mine. Th I never had a bottle either. I acquired mine through a swap. Oh, wow. Okay. And to actually even out the swap, yeah. the person was like, hey, you know what? I'll throw in, uh, I'll throw in a bottle of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. That's awesome. And so I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Then shout out to Jesse Killian. Oh, that is so cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I have the 40 ml bottle, and mm -hmm. I was at Macy's a few months ago, and they were running a promotion. It was a sale, and a bunch of bottles on this one table were all $40. Okay. And I saw this on there, and I'm like, you know what? I've always been meaning to add this to my collection, so I just went ahead and purchased it I'm, the same day. I, I'm still in awe that you <clears throat> don't own this. <laughs> in, in, in I know. It took in, long enough. In the grand scheme of everything that you own, that this is the one that you don't own. I know. Have you tried any of their other flankers? Uh, I actually just recently tried Italian Zest. Okay. Um, okay. Um, nothing right home about. Not crazy I couldn't, about it. No, right? I, I mean, it was, it's, there's, as with this, and you guys will soon find out, there's nothing really to not like about all the light blue and that's true. And the yeah. flankers. At the end of the day, they're so easy to wear and mm -hmm. very versatile. But there's so many flankers. There's I, like Discover Volcano, Swimming in Lapari, oh, Italian yeah. Zest. I was just gonna say Lady there's all the, the, the all the Italian ones. <sighs> I liked. Is it Oh Extreme or Oh Intense? Oh Intense. I I did like that one. I do like that one too. So that's the one that I actually had a chance to review recently. Okay. I said really good things about it on camera just because, once again, very much like this one, it's so easy to wear, so versatile. Mm -hmm. So if we're taking a look at it in terms of its notes, we have grapefruit, mm -hmm. bergamot, pepper, rosemary, juniper, guayac, what I want to say, some woodsy notes in there as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll it, test you. There you go. How well did I do? This is all according to Fragrantica, by the way. You, you get I a, did forget oak moss and you, musk and orange. You, you get like a 93. <laughs> um, you, oak moss and it, it has incense listed. Yeah, that's... I, um, no. You know, it's funny because when people think about incense, they usually think about the smoke that emanates from the cone or the stick or whatever. You, but You think smoky, yeah. But in perfume, incense Churchy. has kind of acquired a different meaning because there are a lot of resins that are used in... Uh, incense making, okay. like you can benzoin or copal right, or right. whatever. So um, with this one in particular, I don't really get much incense. I don't if I don't get any. Yeah. No. Um, so what about like occasions? When would you wear this? Um, this is a perfect, perfect sp uh, spring summer. Um, definitely, definitely summer. Uh, yeah. I would wear this definitely daytime, probably to work. Yeah. Um, super safe. You're not going to get anybody comment. You're not going to get anybody to dislike it. Exactly. Um, you're going to smell fresh. You're going to smell clean. It's that's it. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with anything you said. I think it does have a casual vibe about mm -hmm. it, not just in the way that it smells, but also the price point. Mm -hmm. Like you can find this one online discounted. If I find oh, any links, yeah. I'll leave them down below. But it's such an affordable scent, very versatile. But like you said, summertime. Yeah. Like I really don't see myself, with the exception of wearing it in like a climate controlled yeah. environment, I really don't see myself wearing yeah. it in the winter. Perfect barbecue type, you know. Yeah. Something you go to a music park, something like yep. that. Perfect. Yeah. I probably wouldn't wear it for like date. I mean, you can wear it for a date night. Yeah. But um, I like just because like it smells you, I like so good. Some of the sweeter stuff. You know. Um. Yeah. But, I mean, it's perfect daytime summer fragrance. Another thing yeah, I want to mention point. too is um, I do get the pepper, I do get the citrus, perhaps a little bit of the musk. 
In terms of the herbal elements, um, I mean, I've smelled rosemary before. I can't really say that it's a crystal clear note in mm -hmm. this fragrance, um, but maybe I do get the juniper because that mm -hmm. can kind of have like a woodsy okay. presence. I'm getting a lot of grapefruit off of my skin. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, I do get a lot of grapefruit. A lot. That's of funny. So it has like this tartness about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoy it, you know, at the end of the day. It wouldn't be around and still going. That's what I mean. As long as it's been on the shelves and been selling, if it's not good. Yeah, so to think it's been out for 11 years, right? So there are fragrances the likes of Lotus et Porom, mm -hmm. Abudigio, Angelman. There are a lot of fragrances out there that have been out since the 90s. They almost did. And they're so still doing really well. They're, sti they're standing the test of time. Exactly. You know, it's a tried and true fragrance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this one definitely fits that bill. Sure. The only caveat or drawback I would say is that this is a scent that you probably have smelled before. So when you smell it, you're going to be like, oh, I had this coworker from this year and this job who smelled like this. If so. you haven't smelled it on yourself, you've smelled it on somebody else. <laughs> it, that's, it's almost a guarantee. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the ladies watching, if you are familiar with the women's rendition, it smells very different. And I actually do happen to enjoy both. Yes, I would. I actually, I, I would even go as far as saying I would even. I would wear the women's um, light blue, also. Yeah. With, without 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 even thinking about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I mean, final verdict on this one. If I had to give it a rating, I kind of did away with the rating system on my channel. But if I had to give it anything, it might be like a three out of five or a three point okay. five out of five. Just because I really do enjoy it, it's a Swiss Army knife, it's a workhorse, it gets the job done, it's pleasant, it could possibly even garner a few compliments. I haven't worn it enough to be able to say that I've received a substantial amount of compliments with it, but um, you're never going to have somebody say, oh, you stink. Uh, you know what? Okay, like you, I'm not a, I don't do the number thing. Um, I'm just not a math guy. So I just, <laughs> anything that has anything to do with numbers, I just Plus it's clear. hard to quantify I just something so subjective. Steer clear from. Yeah. Um, if I had rated a 1 to 10, I mean, price point now, because you get it so discounted, just on the price alone, you know, it's a solid, it's a solid 7. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're going to find a lot of other fragrances that smell like this. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a fair assessment, mm -hmm. you know, and if you are a fan of the lighter scents, I, I mean, I know there are so many options out there, mm -hmm. the likes of Blue de Chanel or Dior Sauvage, so mm -hmm. it seems like this one has become an afterthought for a lot of people, that, and, that's why, and that's why I'm giving it a, a seven. There's so many other fragrances out there yeah. now that I could see how this would get overlooked. Not that it's a bad fragrance, it's not, but exactly. it's, it's gonna, it's, it goes under the radar. Yeah. But like I said, it's been out as long as it's been out because yeah, it is what it is. It's it a, does well. It's a, it's a good fragrance, and I like the texture on the. I do too. It kind of has like a velour velvet mm -hmm. feel about it. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was our quick take on Dolce Gabbana Light Blue for men. Uh, if you own, which I'm pretty sure you own, or at, at least tried this fragrance, I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below. Uh, once again, I will be linking Gary's information down below as well, so definitely make sure to check him out. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're a newcomer. This way, you can stay up to date on fragrance reviews, top 10s, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, and a whole lot of other fragrance-related content. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Love you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.